Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you log into another episode uh, of Unnati, the podcast on uh, on the subject of diversity and inclusion run by the National Association for the Blind's Employment and Training, NABIT India. Uh, I'm really proud and uh, fortunate to have uh, a very important guest, um, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, who is uh, who started a career and has and, and has been uh, involved in multiple entrepreneurial ventures across it. And is also I'm also very fortunate to uh, tell my audience today that I have uh, the first of its kind. Uh, she's also uh, been a godmother uh, to multiple children with disabilities, and that's the reason why I thought on the occasion of Diwali, uh, it would be a perfect time for me to invite her and to speak about her journey and also how she has uh, been involved in nurturing uh, these very talented uh, children in this journey. Kavita, ma'am, such a pleasure having you today. Thank you so very much for having me. This is such a special um, you know, episode, also because of the fact that it's something that's very close to my heart. Thank you so much for finding me. And uh, I don't know, I mean, you just connected and uh, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be here. And I do hope that I'll add value to your audience. What was also very unique was the conversation which we had, ma'am, and that's why I thought that it'll be absolutely apt to have it uh, hosted today, uh, close to the occasion of Diwali, because uh, the beacons of hope and the beacons for a better future, uh, that is rare to find. And I thought that would be just the right, uh, uh, you know, audience, just the right person to host. I would not find anyone else but you. And thus, uh, I requested you for this. Ma'am, as we go into the uh, conversation, Kavita, ma'am, if you could, you know, speak more about your journey, um, and I would want you to please address uh, the multiple challenges. I've, of course, read a lot about you, but for the uh, for the audience, uh, the years of your entrepreneurial journey, and also your experience as a godmother uh, to my special friends. Uh, over to you. Thank you so very much. Um, first of all, wish you all a very very happy Diwali. Diwali is actually the festival of lights. And uh, mm. we always say that from darkness into light. And there yes. are, this is much more relevant because of the fact that we are, uh, we abysmally go through life not even realizing that there are people who cannot see the world the way we see it. Right. right? So I wish all of you, all of you, a lot of light from the blindness and the darkness of cruelty. Right. Non-inclusion, non-diversity, discrimination. And I do hope that all of you find it within yourselves to be human beings first. Thank you so much. Ma about my journey. Wow. It's a, <laughs> it's a long journey. Mm. It's a long and interesting journey. Um, started off at a very, very young age. Uh, I'm actually a daughter of a very educated mother, I would say. I, I'm paying more attention and I'm mentioning my mother because uh, to me, mm -hmm. she was my hero and my heroine uh, who had two mm -hmm. PhDs, uh, you know, in, in an era where women were not allowed to educate themselves so much. So she made right. me who I am. I lost her at the end of age of 17, but she okay. was the one who instilled values in us, values mm -hmm. of non-discrimination. Uh, there, were, there were children who came to our house if they were young, girls who did not have any other way but to support themselves by working in people's houses when they came to our house they studied with us they mm. sat with us to study they sat at the mm -hmm. dinner table with us so i have done the same thing with my children so you know discrimination was something that was never part of our lives right so okay. as i uh, went ahead and because i lost it to cancer i i became a healthcare professional in new york city uh, she right. took her there for treatment and she passed away. And, uh, I was all of 17 years old and I was a proxy mm. mother to my parents. Mm. So I had to take care of them and ensure that, you know, they were educated. I promised her, by the way, that on her deathbed, I promised her that I would employ as many people as possible and I would educate as many children as I could. And I would lead mm. a life that is exemplary and leave a mark on this world. Mm. And that's how I have tried to. I do not know if I've been successful. Uh, in that journey, I still have miles to go before I sleep. Uh, so I started mm -hmm. off uh, as a healthcare tech, uh, you know, medical lab technologist, and uh, for uh, almost about eight and a half years, I worked in the US. I came back to India at the age of 
28 because at 26 I had started my first venture, which was computer education, Aptic computer okay. education. One of the things mm. that really uh, was very interesting was Aptic used to have e-learning courses and computer education to me was very important because I knew that was going to be the future. So right. there was this young boy from our village. I was very newly married and he was uneducated. Mm. He was from the village. Uh, I'm yeah. so, so, so humbled to say that today that young child who could not read and write, who we put on, on the computer, got him to learn, is working mm. at an organization that I put him in later on. And he actually yeah. handles digital media marketing. And he's one of the people who does client engagement and client relationship management. This is a young boy who did not know to read and write at all, mm. which is a lesson to us that we do not underestimate anybody in this world. The creator right. has made each one of us to be very, very special and unique. If he has not given us one thing, he has given us something else. So when it comes to people, uh, you know, especially abled uh, children, well, uh, I have a sister-in-law in the family who has a brother with Down syndrome. I've mm. ha I have okay. also got children who have neurological deficits um, where, mm. you know, the right side of the body is not functional at all. I have had, right. uh, you know, a godchild who was my friend's son who had autism and passed away. Mm. So always somewhere or the other. Um, and when I look at, you know, even myself, I've had a lot of health issues i've had mm. children my children because i've had my children suffer from um you know issues when it comes to mental health and well-being so when we look at all right. these people who are very, very different whether they they are my own children that i've given birth to or children mm. of some other mother that happens to be my godchildren to me my heart bleeds for them and right. i always believe that we need to make inclusion a part of our society because the parents of children who have special needs will not always be there. So mm. it is it is our it is our duty as citizens and it is our duty as human beings to be there for another human being, irrespective of what is wrong with them, irrespective of what they do and do not have. They are all mm. special, they're all created by God. So what you know what is good for the goose is never good for the panda. So mm. very importantly, I think I have lived my journey. I, I die every night. Mm. I say goodbye mm. every night. And when I wake up in the morning, it was temporary death. I woke up and I have another opportunity to brighten somebody else's life, to put, uh, you know, to put some happiness on in people's life, put a smile on someone's face or make a difference in the world. So I live uh, thinking that there is a bigger purpose. There's a much larger purpose for which I live on this earth. And that's exactly why each time that I've had a challenge, it has made me that much more stronger. And when I look at children of determination, people of determination, I hmm. somehow feel that I am not lucky. Hmm. People think that they are lucky when they do not have. I don't think I am lucky. I think I am blessed. Hmm. And I think okay. they are luckier because they have a way and God has given them a reason and a way to teach us a better lesson they teach us a lesson every single day. So for me, no, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of what you're doing. I'm very appreciative of what you're doing. Thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. Uh, Kavita, ma'am, just, uh, you know, you're also a godmother to a person with disability and you have also, you know, successfully started multiple ventures uh, in, your, in your career and uh, across that duration. Uh, help, help the viewers understand this. Thus, some qualities which you have inculcated being a godmother uh, to uh, differently abled uh, students or uh, children also had some influence in making you a better entrepreneur. Some nuggets or insights that you uh, have inculcated, which you would want to share. Because there's this oh, huge audience good. of my of my podcast uh, who sometimes feel very, you know, disappointed or they they get at times uh, lead a life where they feel that, you know, this incident which has happened to them, uh, not temporary, but has a permanent impact to their lives. And they take a lot of time to come out of this depression, uh, which is in a way, um, come into their lives. 
so for them i would want a message from you on how has it helped you into shaping to a better person wow uh, i will definitely definitely say uh, that these amazing souls that have come into my life have literally uh, made me rise like a phoenix so how okay. i would say that is because i have been through a lot of challenges uh, in in life so my history is uh, uh <laughs> it's it's been very interesting and i think i've become stronger because of that but these children by the way each time uh, i have seen them either being an artist or a singer or they have a special if you have noticed each one of them have a special quality and what made me stronger is every time that i've had a challenge i immediately think back to these children and say hey listen i have no right to be complaining because there is somebody out there who does not have what i have two square meals right. in a day ability to speak ability to use my hands and feet uh, ability to be able to walk think comprehend and most importantly look at even myself Mm. see uh, you know when you are visually challenged there is that darkness and in that darkness they don't even know how they look like correct how is it okay for us to be you know ignorant about it and just complain and crib about life when we have everything going for us so to me they are my strength each time i see things happening around the world that is inhuman i see things that mm. are happening that are totally discriminatory i see things that happen that are unfair unjust i immediately thank god and i thank my mother for having brought me up to be like this and they are the strength that i have because that makes me even more resilient and it makes me even more determined to be able to do something different and leave behind a legacy for them because each day i am working hard and each day i get up even if i fall because i have a bigger yeah. purpose and it's to be able to serve all these people in the world my no, children are not i don't consider it's just my children i consider that there is a world of children that depend upon me mm. and i need to be able to do for them and many a times what happens is that you know the parents of uh, of children with disabilities are so uh, you know concerned and i think we spoke about this on the other day are so concerned about what would happen to their children you know see after their death and who would we are a caretaker to them for 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 the longest time that we remain alive but what would happen beyond them and as soon as they recover from the plight of acceptance of the challenge which they face uh, i think the second uh, thought which comes to their minds is uh, that we are on this earth for so long right and what happens post uh, we leave this who would take care of uh, my children and that thought is so consuming that eventually uh, they are not in the present also they are always in the future and the future the more you think about it seems more dismal and depressive and it's it's a recurring cycle right so uh, i would want for those who are viewing this podcast and i know you have extreme grit and determination and you were blessed to have strong parents uh not everyone would be that fortunate right so what would be your thoughts so what would be uh, the ways in which you would suggest or advise them uh, to live with this trauma uh recover from it uh, i i i like you rightly said this is not a trauma it's 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 something which you need to accept that this has happened right and how do they prepare themselves for the future this is a beautiful question indeed and uh, when you say about strong parents i'll definitely say that i will not say that my parents were strong my mother had her own weaknesses so the first mm. thing i think we need to accept from our context you know from where we come from is to get rid of the god complex please we are not mm. gods for some mm. reason we come from a culture that somehow thinks matru devo bhava pitru devo bhava hence we are gods we are the be all and end all and nothing can happen without us let's get rid of the god complex and accept that first we are human we can err we can make mistakes and we need to be able to accept that we can make mistakes and say sorry point 1 mm. point number 2 there is a creator up there who has created you there are mm. animals 
there are forests, there are so many creatures in this world that you are not taking care of. They are being taken okay. care of, aren't they? So if hmm. that is the hmm. case, what gives us the right to think that if we don't exist, something will happen? So um, if I can speak, say it in Hindi, uh, or rather I speak Urdu, so I would say Iman or Amal. Iman means faith. Amal is practice hmm. of it. So we all say that we are people of faith. We believe in God. We believe in the creator. We believe in the powers of the universe. If we believe in it, we need to believe that God will take care of us and our children, whether we exist or not. We are mm. like the train that has to take this child from point A to point B. And point B, mm. possibility is, our battery is finished, expiry date is written, we are going to go. Their life is not They do not they do not finish. So we have to equip them with the ability to exist, to know that mm. with me or without me, your life shall go on and mm. equip them with that power and that knowledge and that strength. So we make, we mm. mollycoddle them and we make them, we give them the crutches called parents. Let us not do that. Let us equip mm. the children who are, whether they're specially able, differently able or whether mm. they are normal. We don't do that. We are so used to molly coddling and making them so dependent on us that the child. Mm. I have been very successful in bringing up our children to be very independent individuals, not children. Mm. I treated them like mm. individuals and human beings. So please mm. don't treat these children like they are something special or different. No, they're not different. They're not mm. different. They're just like you. It's just that mm. they do not have one particular thing. So please don't, th don't treat them like they are lesser than you. The day we can treat them as equal, make them as part of our system and accept them mm. that this is how they are born. So just like me and you and somebody else, one is dark, one mm. is white, one is short, one is small, one is thin, one is just like that. They are just, mm. they are different because five fingers are not the same. So why mm. would you accept another child to be just like you and have the same features or the same? We don't need that. So what I would suggest and the way I have treated my specially able, uh, you know, God children, I treat them like just anybody else, normal, right. just like you and me. I would say, yes, mm. like yana, was karna. so I've taught them, I would do that. I would never treat them differently. So when you don't, oh, yeah. what happens is mm. you give them confidence. Hmm. And parents need to remember, with you or without you, these children will survive. They're better fighters than you are. But you are the one who pulls them down. Because you, in your mind, think that they are not capable. Because you have written hmm. them off. Hmm. They hmm. are not hmm. You wrote them off. You had no business to do that. As a parent, hmm. it is your duty to bring up the child, irrespective of who it is, to... Hmm. Ensure and to, for the child to know that you are capable of doing this. You can do anything you want to. But for that, you may need something extra and I will provide you that. Okay. That's okay. what we need to do. We provide them with what they don't have instead of making them feel lesser. Hmm. Right? No. As a matter of fact, we are the ones who are lesser. We are the ones who have the disability in the mind. They are not the ones who have it. We are the ones who have the disability in the mind. Yes. They have all and the I, abilities. I think, ma'am, it, it starts from the acceptance that uh, let there be some failures also. I mean, if they go wrong, you know, they're, they're so prone that always you have to be correct. And we are so fixated with the idea that they have to be right always. And you have to accept it, taking a more macro view on it. That uh, irrespective of disability or not, there would be times when, when decisions may go wrong. Uh, acts, yes. acts may not uh, lead to the desired results. That happens irrespective of disability. That happens with everyone's life. And so there's no special over here. I mean, eventually, if we are only fixated with success is where or a possibility of a uh, incident that to save or to ensure safety. Uh, and then we also complain about the fact going forward, we may not be there. So at one end, you're preparing the you're always saving him and you're not giving him or her the independence whilst aware all along that you are not going to be ever existing right yeah. so it's a very paradoxical situation it is that, a very paradoxical uh, this is exactly yeah. where we have a problem right 
parents mm-hmm. seem to think that they have this you know little toys because they're also very very new being parents right so all of a sudden mm-hmm. they have this toy and they don't know how to take care of it and for me that was never a challenge so i already knew that this is how i'm going to bring up my children to be independent individuals jewels i happen to be a mother because the creator decided i am going to be their mother it could have been somebody else or something else i got lucky but my job is to make them better individuals to sustain and to survive in this world by themselves not using mm. me as a crutch Absolutely. so and we cannot always be like that's what i said so one agreeing to disagree and two drop the god complex only god mm. is perfect in this world apart from him mm. the creator created us we all have our faults and we all can fail and each time you fail you found another way how not to do that mm. you did not fail it was actually one more step towards success because you figured out one more way that you shouldn't be doing something simple mom in your uh, plus 31 years of your career um across industries from healthcare to your entrepreneurial journey what would be that most important leadership lesson which you uh, would want to share uh, which you feel is most tangible in real life i mean of course there would be m- uh, multiple uh, learning which you would have but if the audience would ask for that most uh, you know valuable one that you have learned uh, which you would want to share uh, which is the most relevant in real life i would say drop the ego read your book okay drop okay. the ego read your book never think you're always right i have learned it through my challenges and my failures and i have learned to read myself you know i uh, there is a quote that i have written that says read your nemo find your nemo within nemo in latin means nobody when you become a nobody mm. is when you find the somebody and you can become that somebody so in my entrepreneurial journey um one of the things that i have all learned and i continue learning resilience focus patience perseverance yeah. there yeah. are no two ways about it. and faith about all these things faith 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 and faith faith in the almighty faith in the creator faith in yourself faith in the people around you faith in positivity faith in the powers of the universe pure faith i am all pure faith so it begins with faith and ends with faith and in between is all these things because if i don't have that i won't be able to do this no focus no okay, patience so no pers- no hard work uh how do you um, retain that faith if things or or uh, actions or incidents happens which are contrary to your expectation let's say uh, uh, and i'll take you to the next entrepreneurial venture of yours uh, which you have recently started ma um of course uh, it's a coin toss right it could be successful it may not be successful you had the faith you have taken all actions um, to ensure that it yes. it be successful of course uh, with your learning for 31 years you have applied all that you could have to ensure its success but what if so how do you factor for that that has happened too i'll be able to tell you when we go to the next question but then um there are times when i have planned for example my first venture itself let's take my first venture itself my first venture mm. was into computer education i started it mm. at the age of 26 1995 mm. we started it 96 i came back to india 2000 mm. dot com bubble burst why do k happens so the whole world is saying, oh no more computers we will not have anything today me and you are talking 23 years later but 23 years ago people mm. said that's it computer is done all these people who have come into technology they ruined our lives now all data has mm. gone blah 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 everything happened and then something happened 2000 i had my child my second second born and in two years the business dwindled and sky didn't sky rocket sky dived okay so it was become a white okay. white elephant so at that point of time mm. the very important thing was to make that decision exit do not mm. have a white exit exiting for an entrepreneur is the most difficult thing hmm. if you see absolutely you see you can explain yourself exit you will come back again hmm. but exit for that time being hmm. and if you fail after you have applied all things that you have if you failed stay strong hmm. because it is only the bend at at the bend of the road not the end of the road because 
you will start something else again. Pick yourself and find, take a break, withdraw within, do some soul searching, start off with a bang again. And that's me. Right. You know, I'm like oh. a spring. That's what, you mm. know, to, to describe myself, I, always, mm. I, I mean, that's something that I described myself as when I was a kid. I'm a spring. Mm. Each time life pushes me, pushes me down, I jump higher. Mm. The harder you push, the higher I jump. Awesome, ma'am. I hope I can inculcate that. I think that is going to be my selfish takeaway from this podcast to try and, you know, uh, uh, um, immortalize that into my life. Uh, ma'am, uh, on the, uh, the venture which you recently started, if you could speak more about um, KF International and what are you doing in that and um, how is it, uh, you know, I remember you mentioning about how it's going to be uh, coming to India too, but presently it's in Dubai. So if you could speak about it, please. So k and International started with a vision that was much larger than life, I would say. The first okay. vision was to erase boundaries. I do not believe in boundaries in life. Mm. I don't believe in borders. Mm. I'm sure that not many people mm. will like this answer, but I do not believe in boundaries or borders. I believe that mm. human beings are human beings are human beings, irrespective of which part of the world they come from, where, which caste, which creed, which religion. I have no discrimination in my mind because that's not how I was brought up, right? right. So I wanted, I wanted to set up an organization where I can be situated, where I, I did not have to worry about borders. I did not worry about, oh my gosh, there is this situation where I cannot bring products across the border. I cannot support entrepreneurs across. I did not want to think that. So I wanted a space where I can set an example where I am supporting entrepreneurs who have innovative products. So 12th Commonwealth India Business mm. Meet, I was one of the speakers, and I met about 105 women from 37 countries. And one of the mm. challenges that they pointed out, this is in 2010, was that they did not have, they did not know how to place a fair, fair market value. They did not know how to go, get onto mm. the global arena because they didn't have the wherewithal. So the dream was, we wanted to pick products that were innovative, disruptive, unique products of startups and be able to take it out into the global market with a representation and ensure that they got fair market value. What do I mean right. by fair market value? To me, is different. Generally, people go, get the distributorship, give them a particular price, which is generally not, you know, X, even X, it is always beneath X. And then they market 100x and take it out to the world. Meanwhile, the person who has actually made the product gets peanuts. Mm. So right. what I do, I like to pick it at retail value. Okay. So whatever is the retail cost, that is what I would like to do. So if in India there is an entrepreneur who is selling a product, I would pick it at retail value. Then I would mark up because mm. they deserve that. They cannot mm. forego of their profits just because. But it has to be reasonable again, because even there, you would find a lot of hypocrisies. And, you know, so I'm mm. very particular about that. That was one reason. Two, I wanted to be able to, um, a very nice <laughs> thought process that happened, a revelation, is mm. Correct. So I because I brought up my children, I've done everything I wanted to. I'm a very frugal person. I like my simplicity. Mm. I'm a two roti mm. person. Great difficulty, mm. by the way. If I eat two times a day, it's a great thing. But Jee. for me, what I want to be able to do is I want to feed as many people as possible. I want to educate three, you know, um, girl children. I want to be able to house the homeless. I want to be able to do something for people of determination. So for that, I know that the funds, you know, staying in India and just going to my eight to five, nine to five job, it's not going to help. I needed to be mm. able to build a conglomerate where we can earn the kind of money to be able to give back to the society. And that is one of the basic, basic, basic foundations of KNS International. So we have multiple mm. products that we have on board. Uh, onboarded, a uh, few of them as distributorships, a couple of them are our own, and uh, you know we like to innovate. So um, I can't talk much about uh, our, you know our disruptive product because you know we have not launched it yet. We're planning on launching. So here mm -hmm. is where I would definitely uh, be able to 
shed light on your previous question. We mm. registered here in March. I came here mm. in March, you know, mm. and then registered the company, went back in July, I moved here. We were hoping to launch the product last year. It's okay. one year and four months now. Believe me, the mm. challenges I've had in terms of not being able to get investments. I have two amazing partners, men mm. who I respect to the nth limit. They are the power beneath my wings. They have supported mm. me brilliantly. We still needed some more funding to be able to launch, and we are stuck right there. It has been a challenge being a woman entrepreneur. It has been a challenge being a startup, and it continues to be. And people wouldn't, they want to see a POC. If everybody wants to see a proof of concept, where are we going to have a proof of concept? I am not a capitalist. Mm. So that's a challenge mm. I've had, and I continue to have. However, I'm not giving up. So the 15 months of journey, there have been times when I could not afford basic things. But I mm. always had. And that faith is what supported me. And month on month, I never had a problem to take it. Somehow, somewhere, somebody either helped me or I was able to make something just to support myself. And I never give up. I am not, I've not given up because I'm not done until I am done. I have a larger purpose and greater purposes in this world require greater sacrifices. And I am willing to do that. I left my children behind. I remember mm. I came here for three months, by the way, and it's 15 mm. months and I've not been able to go back. So, mm. you know, in between, I had to have my friend vacate the house, put all my stuff in storage. I don't even know what condition they are in. I have not, mm. my, I've not seen my son in 15 months. So I talked to them, you know, but I brought them up to be uh, very supportive. And their thing is mm. go, go and, you know, fly in the sky, do whatever you have to. You have given up so much for everybody in this world. So I have amazing children you know, that have supported me. So it is a challenge, uh, you know, and I look forward to through our organization being able to do a lot. One of the things that we are looking at is, you know, outsourcing some of our, we are getting into the BPO project, um, you know, because we also are a corporate service provider, not just a trading yeah. organization now. So we yeah. help uh, business, set up businesses here in Dubai from across the world. Mm. Uh, so mm. I got, I was her. Huh, I was actually cheated by my consultant who was doing my, uh, who was doing our registrations. So I made up my mind to be the best ever in giving these services. So we are a corporate services provider and my mm. pure business and my goal is to help businesses to set up without being ripped apart, giving them the right advice that they need. And through that particular thing, we would like to um, you know, give out projects to specially abled people because they can actually do, you know, uh, run these projects with, without, uh, you know, much, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, problems. And hence, this is something that we definitely are looking at. And my captain of media and marketing works with specially abled children. He worked with organizations and also with the United Nations. So, yeah, so we're looking at doing all these things through our venture here. So I've got a very big, big, big purpose and goal. I'm not there. I think ma'am what happens, have a long journey. What happens is, uh, I think what happens is that uh, uh, whatever the future we foresee along the way God over the years prepares us for the task and that what happens is that uh, all the um, you know incidents or things which happen along the path they make a lot of sense retrospectively from where we stand because why yes. xyz happened yeah. uh, you understand many many years after it has happened why was it so important? How has it contributed to making you a better individual? Uh, I, of course, uh, on the very uh, present and on an immediate uh, level, you need to endure uh, a lot of pain through what has happened. But then uh, what is the uh, God's plan in it uh, comes to realize way later, uh, maybe after. Uh, yes. That's what I could gather. I and I also. Yes, very yeah. much, very, very much. So one of the things that I've been very, very fortunate, fortunate, I would say, I mean, I'm, I find myself to be a very blessed individual is my partner is a very spiritual being. And he, he is also the master of my soul, literally, I say, because he has guided me and he has kept me strong and he has stood by me. And my other partner who joined recently on board this year, he is also an amazing individual who has so much of belief in, in my capabilities. But uh, through these two men, I have been very strong. And I'm also blessed with a spiritual guide that I do have. I have a guru that I, I 
bow down to and uh, i think i am who i am where i am how i am what i am uh, and mm -hmm. i exist because of these amazing souls in my life i don't think it's all me i think the creator has been very very kind to me but you are very much right because we think mm -hmm. that we have a better plan for ourselves mm -hmm. but the creator who created mm -hmm. us has a better plan than we you and i can so when it keeps unfolding in front of you and i see that by the way you know and mm. every day the way things have moved on although the 15 months were but believe me these 15 months has have unraveled things that i couldn't have even imagined i mean mm. sitting over here i have written a book before never had so much i wrote the book it launched and out of the blue my book was picked for an award and i won a master uae's mastermind mm. awards i was flabbergasted mm. i was shocked when i heard that i was nominated nominated and after the nomination when i heard i had the award i mean i and i am i'm now very much close to both of them dr navana and dr mansoor uh, who actually are the ones who ran this event and dubai itself by the way this is a city that has fascinated me so to be mm. able mm. to see leadership at the best level is to be able to come here because this is a desert it is sand mm. and on sand you see structures that are that you couldn't have even imagined and dreamed that shows leadership that shows direction that shows resilience focus and a vision to be able to become somebody and for me the burj khalifa i've actually written one poetry in my book on burj khalifa because it that monument inspired me and started speaking to me the first time i saw it and mm. i said you know what this is where i'm going to make my life and this is exactly where i'm going to rise like a phoenix what i have done in 31 years does not matter but what i'm going to do from here on is what is going to write history and i'm aware of that god speed ma'am and hope uh, it all uh, delves or shelves out the way you would want to i have Inshallah. you know uh, been very fortunate with our country too and i think uh, uh, you know india has Uh, a lot of potential uh, it's it's a very promising place to be in at least in the times we are and uh, you know uh, i think it's a combination of uh, you know the availability of resources and the and the availability of uh, right hearted people who have the good intent you know to give back and i think that's uh, that's what is becoming the the great the greatest ingredient required to run a successful social enterprise and i think uh i owe a lot to the people and a low uh, owe a lot to the country uh for for realization of what nabit because eventually even when we started uh, uh you know there are thousands of ideas which germinate each day and 999 of them fail uh, by the day so for those which survive it's just not the entrepreneur behind it from the people who back it uh, and uh, yeah on the occasion of this joyous event of diwali i think uh, a lot of gratitude to them also of all the people who have you know very much directly or indirectly been um, a part of this journey uh, they have all done their very bit uh, to ensure where it has come to mom just the last the most beautiful things sure. yeah sure you were saying something one of something. the most beautiful things that i that i actually uh, would like to sort of you know uh, i hear my partner say this a whole lot ye jo mitti ka putla jo hai bahut khaas hai he always says that so this <laughs> you know this physical being of us this human being the people that we are mankind human beings matter they are souls that have mm. come on this earth to enrich the gods mm. do not need us they have enough angels right but mm. it is us who can be there for each other so uh, it Absolutely. is not about you know for me people are all about the land that they are so you love your mm. land for the people Absolutely. not for anything Very else richness you know wo jo mitti jo hai wo mitti mein kya hai the culture the tradition that you have carried for centuries and centuries and centuries to be better human beings is what is mm. the richness is that it is not anything else it is not anything else it is about where you are born and the the culture and the tradition and the tarbiyat jisko kehte hain your upbringing mm. if your upbringing is not proper then nothing nothing else can be right so we need to be able to have better upbringing for ourselves and mm. we also have to give that back to our children we owe it to them we have no business being irresponsible parents we have no business being 
you know, uh, not being accountable. So accountability and responsibility in parenting is very, very important. I think, ma'am, uh, you know, dil se nahi hai, wo judta bhi nahi hai. So that also I've seen that for the people who join the journey, unless and until they are not aligned, they do not, uh, you know, uh, they do not see uh, why is it important and they do not uh, have the intent, they will not join. There will be different reasons why they would refuse. But eventually, more often than not, for those who do not associate it, they will not participate in it. So that's something uh, which is Probably common. because they can't understand. They can't comprehend. They can't comprehend because if everything is seen from a PNL prism, from a profit and loss prism, then uh, this will not make sense uh, to proceed with. I think it takes a lot more uh, than that uh, to to run and to you know be a part of this journey. Ma'am, yes. what are your, uh, if I can ask this as the last question, um, what are your five-year goals which you see uh, towards uh, not only on this professional uh, journey, but also I ask this as a mother, uh, as a godmother to your uh, differently abled uh, children. Uh, how do you want to nurture them in this next five years uh, to make them better in, uh, human beings? The five-year goal, I would say, is for me to be able to be able to have at least achieved 10% of what I want to. I say 10% because my goals are very huge, right? I want to be able to have at least educated um, 500 girl children. I want to have at least housed 100 homeless. I want to have at least enabled 100 differently abled children. I want to mm. have at least projects that I can. So uh, my five-year goals are very, very huge. So even if I can reach 10%, of that, you know, mm. with God's uh, blessings, and I, I would be very happy. But for me to be able to move from here, point A that I am in right now, where mm. point A is mm. still not what I'm satisfied with, I want to be able mm. to get to point B because there is still Z. So I want to be mm. able to get from point A to point B and then onwards and upwards uh, for, mm. for them. I want to see at least the few of uh, my godchildren, and I'm sure I will I, I'll probably be a godmother to a few more uh, being associated mm -hmm. with uh, associations, because there is an association here, by the way, and also one in Bangalore uh, that my friend runs. I want to be associated with these uh, organizations to be able to, I will not say donate. I don't like the word donate, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I do not like the word donate, you know, because mm -hmm. who are you to donate? Bhagavan khud aap donation de raha hai. So, donate so what has come to you is because it, it is because the creator has donated it to you the universe and the people in it have been kind enough to donate you a life donate you something that is somebody does not have so you pass it on mm. it is not yours so what is yours will stay with you what is not yours you need to pass on all you need is two square meals in a day a house to live in and education so anything in excess need to be given and spread across. And that is what we believe in. And with me and my partners, that is something that we have decided that from the profits that we are going to have, at least 50 to 60% of it, we will be giving out to the mankind and the society. That's a wonderful it's not even the two CSR that people do. It is our own personal earnings that we have. We want to be able to give at least 50 to 60% of it just for mankind. And I want to live like that. I want Sometimes I feel, ma'am, when you make that goal, na, somewhere you make God also a stakeholder. Because now, yeah. for that for that success, he has to care for that many people. And if he sees you as a conduit, I think, yes. uh, uh, you know, I'm perhaps speaking the business language, but I think you're making him a partner in this to ensure its success Correct. because you see that. Correct. That's my thought to it. Okay. And, and I think that's it. You're very much right. Because Vasila Banata hai na hame. We become mm -hmm. that. You know, we are like that vehicle from point A to point B. We are supposed to be doing something. He sent something and we are delivering it. We are nobody. Mm. He chooses us. We are the chosen mm. ones if we have picked something different. And you know, Malik Mukarrar karte hai kisi ko. Designation hai. Aapko designate kiya gaya hai. And I always, you know, I hear this from my mentor and, you know, my partner. And I am I'm blessed that I am able to even be here. The respect I am getting from you today is not because I did something great. 
it is because mm-hmm. i was given an opportunity to do something differently that you see me differently and it is all vice versa it is yeah mm-hmm. you know so i think well, it's a blessing we are conduits and we need to become conduits more of us need to become conduits more of us need to be able to do this otherwise the world is not going to be a beautiful place we are not going to leave a better place for our children and we will be the ones to be blamed bilkul sahi ma'am uh with that ma'am thank you so much for this very heartwarming conversation it was such a pleasure hosting you ma'am and um, i i do not um, trying to impress but this is one of the best uh, podcast that i have had thank you so much for this opportunity ma'am uh, because uh, something which i felt you spoke from your heart on multiple questions which i asked and that is unique from a guest thank you so much for this and uh, i wish all the success and all prosperity from mabud uh and from the people who we serve uh and across the country uh thank you so much for the opportunity and look forward to remaining connected with you thank you so very much arjun and do reach out to me and whatever i can do from our organization's point of view and even personally too i'll be there if there are if there are uh, you know at any point of time you need uh, me to inspire your parents or motivate them or be able to inspire even your kids that you work with or be able to do anything please feel free to reach out and i'll be very very happy because i feel that they are the ones who are gifting me with something i'm not giving anything to them actually they are going to gift me with an opportunity and i would love to have that opportunity to be able to and to all your viewers wish you all a very very happy diwali and to all those special ones out there you are the most special in the world you can do anything you want anything that you feel and anything that you can imagine and dream of never give up on yourselves and don't let anybody tell you you are less because you are more than anybody else you're not lesser you're more than all of us we, because we are limited in our capacity because we can see only to that much but because you can see beyond i feel that you are less than we are so more power to all of you and achieve whatever you can thank you so very much right. I'm very happy to thank you so much have a great bye ma'am thank you bye bye